Hello, my name is Dr. Yobugataya. I am a lecturer at the University of Birmingham, and today's course is going to be about psychology as a science with a focus on the replication crisis. So, in order to introduce this particular lecture, I'd like to talk about a particular study to give you an understanding of exactly where we're at in terms of understanding psychology as a science. And to do this, I'll present a real scientific study that has been published in an academic journal. To do this, Let's talk about a study that received widespread media attention. And this study took a look at 103 Australian women who ranged between 20 to 70 years of age. And it found that the most attractive quality a woman believed to, to exist within men, specifically if they were heterosexual, was the quality of humor. So the funnier you are as a man, the more attractive you are considered by women above everything else. Do you believe this to be true? Do you believe that other things are more attractive? Like for example, a man having rippling pectorals or having a excellent TikTok account. What would actually make that person more attractive in your eyes? Do you believe that to be the case? Do you believe it to be universal? Do you see the study and immediately question it? On its scientific merits, on its useful, uh, its methods, what kind of things would you question this on? So how about other studies? You may have heard in our other courses in regards to Zimbardo's study, where if you found that if you put people in guard roles, they abused randomly selected prisoners, uh, so to speak, within the Stanford University. Um, how about social influence and facilitation and inhibition, where if you find that if you get people and you get them to be watched by a group of other people, they tend to perform worse on tasks if the task is difficult, but better on tasks if they find those tasks to be easy in the presence of a crowd. Even roaches appear to show this effect if you follow the scientific literature. There's the robber's cave study, which you may have heard of as well, which basically found that if you get two groups together and they have to compete on some form of resource, then they tend to hate each other and they tend to, to show lots of out-group hate. Uh, Bushman, you may have heard that video games cause aggression, not violence, aggression. You may have heard other uh, studies that have re re shown that this effect is, happens over and over and over again. No matter what you look at, you get the same result, that video games cause aggression. So how many of these studies do you think are true? How many of these studies do you think are, in, in fact, something that definitely happens 100% of the time, or 90% of the time, or 95% of the time? Would you give these 50% of the time even? So there's that question here of how scientific are these studies? And this brings us to the idea of what it means to be scientific. If it's a question of scientific, we need to understand what science is. In order to get to that point, we need to understand the parts of what makes, uh, makes a science a science. And we need to also understand what makes psychology a science. We can, a lot of the time when people say, oh, I did this scientific analysis, they mean something else entirely. So to get to a clear understanding of this, I'd like to introduce the idea of what makes a science a science. So in order to explore these ideas of what makes psychology a science and the replication crisis, we need to understand a definition of science. And the best definition we have comes from a philosopher by the name of Karl Popper. Popper argued that science required a specific pattern where theories were made based on observable phenomena with a hypothesis that you would you basically have a prediction about what would happen. Because, however, Popper argued that all observations are on the basis of a point of view, you should be trying to show that any theory that you have, any hypothesis that you have, is false. You should be testing to see whether or not your thing is truly false. So you need to do studies that can falsify a theory. So to break that down in more useful terms for us here, we need to define science across three separate criteria. The first criteria is we have to have reliable, valid theory.
something that can predict something to happen in the future. This theory should be shown to be possibly wrong through quantifiable experimentation. When you run this, oh, this, these experiments, let's say, for example, you find things that don't fit with that theory, you should either refine that theory or make a brand new theory. And it should feed back into a broader understanding overall. So psychology in this metric is a scientific study of human behavior. So we have many, many different theories of what, make, what uh, we have in terms of human behavior. And the idea behind psychology should be that is we have a reliable, valid theory that can predict human behavior that should be possibly shown to be wrong through quantifiable experimentation. And if we do find things that contradict our theory, we should be able to create a new theory and ref or refine existing theories as we need. However, psychology has run into a lot of problems here. Now, I'm going to summarize what I've basically said here. Overall, what we need to understand is the idea of psychology as a science. Psychology as a science means we need to understand what science is. And in order to understand what science is, we need to break it down. Reliable, valid theory that predicts theory should be possible to falsify through quantifiable experimentation. And when it, if we do find something that is falsified, then we should refine that theory or make a new theory. So with that, in the next lecture, what I'd like to talk about is the specific issues that psychology has had that basically has shown that we have a lot of problems within this domain. And I'd like to break that down in our next lecture.